Today I was going to make the video about making the new downfeed nut for the little Atlas Shaper to replace this one that's worn out. And I think we showed before that it was very definitely worn and that's why we had so much play in it. That was the plan for the day, was to start working on that and I'd cut out a cut out a blank to, to do that and everything. And I had ordered a tap off of our favorite auction site. And this is the tap that I got. And I had no great expectations. This was basically a one-off thing. I didn't, uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to make a few of these nuts and, and put in my store on the on the website or if I was just going to make one for the shaper itself and be done with it. So this is a very inexpensive tap and I fully expected it to say made in China and um, it was very inexpensive and it's a half ten right hand thread and I was disappointed I guess that it wasn't that it didn't say it was made in China. It uh, has a little bit of engraving that says T one half by ten and that's the extent of what it is and um, you know you can look at the square on the shank and it was ground the same distance on three sides and they kind of ran out of grinding wheel I guess on the fourth one or anyway. Anyway I started measuring this and for in the condition it's in for my uses it's a worthless piece of crap. Outside dimensions on this tap as near as I can run a mic down on it from from top of the cutting surfaces on two opposing sides is uh, 0.5215 and I got out my little machinist handbook and when you start looking up dimensions on it for internal threads Acme single start screw threads if we look at internal threads it is within spec for a half 10 uh, minimum is 50 0.5200 and maximum is 0 0.5400 so the tap actually is within specifications but when I mic out the the screw that I've got itself it mics out at 0.4987 so we had our fancy little brown and sharp old school micrometer you know you don't see me drag out a micrometer very much but so anyway um, even though this taps within spec for my uses, it's not going to be any better than the nut that, I, that I'm trying to replace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this tap down, which we've already figured out that I don't know what the heck I'm doing, so we might as well see if we can screw up this high, high dollar tap here. So what my plan is, is we're going to set up the corn tool and cutter grinder and actual dimensions of what I want this, this screw thread to be comes out to be just about halfway up the up the tap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do the uh, do the same thing that I did on my reamer shank the other day to to um, repair the drawbar on the Atlas lathe or to, to modify that drawbar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn this outer dimension down a little. Hopefully I hit the right size. What I will probably do is I'll probably set up a piece of piece of stock and go ahead and tap a hole with it as it is just to see what dimensions we get and see how well it fits and then we'll make adjustments accordingly and decide how much we're going to trim this tap down and, and we'll see if we can't uh, improve our cutter grinding skills a little bit. So anyway, I'll get started on that here directly and uh, follow along and we'll see how we come out. What I've done is I've went ahead and marked where I want my dimensions to cut. This is this where my little sharpie mark is, is actually, I've got that all the way around, that's the proper dimension I want for this tap. And I think that will give me the proper dimension for the, for the nut when I thread it. I've added a little bit of allowance, it'll cut just a little bit oversized, and the way this is shaping out it may cut quite a bit oversized. But anyway, what I've done is i set up the little tool and cutter grinder, and I was going to worry, I was going to go ahead, cut these, cut this upper dimension down, and then go ahead and sharpen it, cut uh, back off for the relief and all that. I don't think I'm going to. We only want it to cut here. I think this is mainly going to be a relief. I may I may um, cut a little back rake on it or cut a little relief on it to 
um, actually form, you know, do the proper thread forms on it with a proper cutting edge and some relief on the backside and all that. But I don't think it's important for this one. Um, I've already set it up and spun this around, and I'll show you the setup on the tool and cutter grinder here in just a minute. But I've already made a, a couple of passes around it, and this tap has got quite a bit of warpage in it. I've marked this with a Sharpie, and you can look and see the shiny marks here on this uh, front edge. Hopefully this is all going to focus up in here. But you can see the shiny marks that it's taken off and it's not uniform or at all around the back side of it. So I think it's we've got some warpage in here. Um, so this may be a exercise in futility if nothing else. But anyway I'm just going to cut my relief on there and we'll see if we can't get a get a nut for the shaper off of this. If not why we'll go another route. But I think, um, you know, it probably if I was going to do very many of these, why it would have, by the time I get done screwing around, I could have actually bought a good tap and, and had it go right. But anyway, I'll move the um, camera down here to show the cutter grinder and we'll get this set up. Okay, so here's the setup for the, for the cutter grinder. Put my long bar on here with my centers in it, and this is four long reamers or, or things like that. And this is the finger that we're going to rest the, the flutes against. And I've already trued up the wheel, all that good stuff. We're pretty much on center height. We are on center height here. And the way this sets up is it just sits in there just like that. This back tooth will rest on the will rest on our finger here. And our tail stock goes in. And we lock it in place. And then when we grind it, our cutter wheel's going in a, if I'm looking at it, a counterclockwise direction, which is going to hold down pressure on our on our flutes as it grinds, and um, then to change flutes we can just rotate up through, just rotate it past to the next one, and then put downward pressure, and that lines up our flutes. I had a dial indicator set up, so we're running parallel this way, and we're running level this way, so that's all within spec, and that's the way I grind a that's the way I would grind my flutes. Now you can set your angles if you're going to taper it back out like this is, but all we're interested in is is just some relief there for that. And um, the way we'll operate it is we will do a we'll loosen our bottom lever, run it in, and manually feed it across. Then I'll bring it back, and then we can feed an adjustment with a micrometer screw here, and that will adjust how much how far over it will travel. All right, so I guess we will set this up as if we were going to cut our back relief. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my finger out of the way, and I'm going to just spin it to, to the diameter I want, which in this case is going to be a uh, 4987 is what we're going to use for a dimension. Once we get it to that dimension, then I think we'll go back, we'll reinstall our finger, and um, go ahead and give us a sharp edge with some back relief on it. So let's get this finger out of the way right now, just like that. Not quite to dimension. Let's take a little more off. Let's take a couple more thou off. Alright, I've adjusted for back relief on this by raising the head, raising the grinding spindle. We're set up against our finger on the back, we're holding downward pressure on it, and we're going to slowly advance it until we start getting up to our cutter head. 
and I'm not going to worry about a secondary relief on it. We're just going to cut the primary relief because this is basically just a just a following cut anyway. So. All right, we'll go ahead, I'm going to uh, hand hone the very edge of those. I've got just a very little bit. I could probably make one more cut across there. But anyway, there's our cuts with our relief. So I think I'll just lightly touch those with a diamond stone or a diamond hone and we'll sharpen those edges, although I don't think they're going to be an issue at all. I think we could probably cut with them just like that because in reality I don't think we're cutting with this section of them. So I'll double check my measurements and uh, then we'll set up and see if we can't cut us a uh, nut for on the shaper. <laughs> 